In this session, we are going to learn about the object-oriented databases. Okay, so first I'm going to tell you why at all we need such kind of databases. Okay, the first reason why we need them is there are certain applications which require modeling of complex objects. Okay, which require modeling of complex objects. Our traditional relational system does not allow this to happen. Why? Because in a traditional relational system, we do not have multi-valued attributes. We do not have composite attributes, right? We can only have simple atomic attributes and that is why those systems are unable to provide this kind of modeling. The other reason is with the increasing use of object-oriented programming languages, we have an impending need so that these programming languages can use objects directly from the database. Okay, so what we need is that these languages should somehow be able to talk to the database in such a manner that the objects that these languages operate on can be directly stored in the databases and can be directly fetched as and when required. We do not want translations to happen in this process. Okay, no translations or transparent translations. Okay. What do we mean by transparent translation? It means that user is totally unaware of the translation that is being taken place. The object which is being used in a programming language is to be converted into something which can be stored in a database. This is done in a totally transparent manner with the user totally unaware of it. Okay. So such object oriented databases allows to permanently store an object which can be used by the object oriented programming languages. Now we are going to take a look at the features that these object oriented languages or rather object oriented databases provides to us. Okay, so I'm going to write it as features of object oriented databases okay the first feature is it allows us to specify state and behavior okay so what is the state an object normally has some properties okay it would have some properties let's suppose these are my properties and it has some behavior okay what do we mean by behavior behavior are set of operations that modify these properties so here we have operations here we have properties okay a state is defined by the values of these property attributes okay and a behavior is defined by the operation is defined by the operation that modifies these property attributes okay modifies or operates upon these property attributes okay so let's take an example to clarify this concept let's suppose I have a object let's suppose this is an object that models a rectangle okay so here I would have the length of the rectangle 
I would have the breadth of the rectangle. Okay. Just spare the spelling over here. And we would have some operations on this. Let's suppose one of the operation is area. Okay. And the other is the operation of expansion. Okay. I would just write it as expand. Okay. So, what is the state of this object? The state would be given by when I say length is equal to 15 centimeters and breadth is equal to 2 centimeter. This is a state of this rectangle in which this rectangle is having a length of 15 centimeter and breadth of 2 centimeter. Okay. And what behaviors can it have? Behaviors are defined by operations. So, a rectangle can be used to calculate the area. Okay. So, area is going to operate upon or rather we would say area is equal to length which is the attribute into breadth. Okay. So, area is operating on the property attributes. Okay. Area is operating on property attributes. Okay. And we also talked about operations that modify or operates upon property attributes. So, what can be the other operation, the other operation is that of expansion. If I say expand by let's say 10%, okay. So, what we are going to get is let's suppose I increase the length by 10%. So, I am going to get length is equal to length into 1.1. So, here what is happening? Here the expand operation is modifying the property attribute. Okay. So, in this way an object oriented database allows me to specify not only attributes but also behavior in terms of operations that can be used on those attributes. Okay. The next feature is that of object IDs or object identifiers. We refer to them as OIDs. The full form is object identifiers. Okay. We talked about why we need a object oriented database system, right? We need it because our programming language can directly store its objects in the database and fetch as in one required. Just understand what happens in a programming language. Okay. When a program terminates, okay, then all the objects that are in the primary memory are lost. Okay. So, when a program terminates, all objects are lost. These kind of objects are called as transient objects. Okay. We call them as transient objects because they do not live forever. Their life is determined by the life of the program which is executing them. Okay. However, my object oriented database allows me to store objects permanently in the database. Store objects permanently in the database. Okay. These objects are called as the these objects are called as the persistent objects. Okay. So, we call these objects as persistent objects because they persist beyond the life of the program. Okay. Why? Because 
दे परसिस्ट बियॉन्ड द लाइफ ऑफ द प्रोग्राम नाउ वी शुड हैव सम मैकेनिज्म टू रेफर टू दिस परसिस्टेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स राइट सो ओआईडीज आर द मैकेनिज्म और अदर द एस इज going to be a small over here oids are mechanism to refer to persistent objects okay you can think of an oid as an pointer that is going to tell you the address of the location where this persistent object is stored actually it may not be a real pointer it may be a pointer to pointer or a multi level pointer kind of mechanism that may be implementing a oid but it can be thought of in a manner which refers to it being a pointer okay an oid is immutable okay we will see what immutable means when i say an oid is immutable i say that all oids or rather every oid should refer to a single object okay every oid should refer to only one object should refer to only one object what this means is let's suppose i have an object over here this is my object one okay and its oid is let's suppose a b c 2 1 3 6 okay so this is the oid of object one now let's suppose i have deleted this object one from the database deleted the object from database so my oid this which is abc2136 is now free okay is now free but since we say that oids are immutable i cannot use this oid to refer any other object despite the fact that this object now no longer exist in the database okay so that is the concept